Well, this is how things tend to go. You think you're done with a project, well, in reality you really aren't because you can always figure out a million more cool features to add to it. So this is obviously the solar power briefcase I made in an earlier video. And if you haven't seen that, I'll link it in down below. Anyway, compared to that video, we have now a large electronic device added, as well as an extra switch and three more output connectors. So what happened was I figured I am going to need some kind of speed control for a fan that is going to be powered often by this device. And uh, I went for a couple different notions, perhaps an LM337 with a potentiometer, perhaps 7805. But then I remembered I have this nifty 160 watt DC PC power supply, which is a buck boost regulator, which can go from about 6 volts up to uh, a bit of a about 30 really, top end, and I figured that's going to do everything I want to, it's going to give me a bunch of output voltages, it's going to do it efficiently, I believe I rated for well over 90% efficiency at most loads, and uh, it's a neat little package that doesn't require any additional cooling. So I just mounted that there, it's not entirely wired up yet, I haven't put the actual input wiring in there, it's running in test mode, but uh, the cooler thing I wanted to show off is my fan remote. I wanted to have a remote control for the fan high and low setting. And uh, that's a bit of an issue because I don't want to have a million different connectors on this thing. And uh, since I'd already been using DC plugs, I wanted to use DC plugs for that as well. Now, when we're switching speeds of a fan, it isn't really a major deal to just disconnect the 12 volts input and put 5 volts there instead. But due to the way these DC plugs are constructed, I need, or well, my remote is limited to one pin and ground, because I do not want anything except ground on this outer ring, because indeed it's touching the metal outside of the case, so all of this is going to be ground. So I had to figure out a way to switch between 5 and 12 volts on this output uh, while only changing the state of a middle pin of this one. And the route I went is really the simplest possible. I just dug up an old relay and used that. And here is the relay itself. It's a normal relay which you'd solder to a PCB normally, uh, but I've just soldered some wires to it. We've got the 12 volts coming in, the 5 volts coming in, and an orange wire which is going to a switch on the front panel and then returning to the fan output as well as a coil input there which is going between ground and the switch and uh, that's mainly the reason for this connector here which is putting out a regulated 12 volts I figured it would be a nice feature because, but I also had to have regulated 12 volts here to power the relay so that worked out as a bit of a bonus the remote switch assembly itself is extremely simple, it's just a single pole switch which goes between on and off and uh, it is mounted to a hard drive magnet. Uh, I took and bent a corner up, drilled a hole to mount the switch and it'll now stick to anything. On the previous video someone also commented that I should put some kind of lining along the edge here because it was really ugly uh, to just have the cut aluminium and plywood coming out there and as you can see I have put something there and this is a bit of an unusual thing to use for this because this is just cut up uh, in wall installation wire and I just cut the outer sheath off and uh, put it along the edge and it's hardly gonna win any beauty contest but it does uh, cover up the ugly cut and it does prevent you from cutting yourself to pieces on this sharp aluminium stuff and when you think you're done, there's always more stuff to add. But I swear this is the final iteration of this device. And everything's wired up now and everything works. So uh, what I've added here are two uh, generic uh, eBay boost converters, uh, which are going to two different laptop power leads. Uh, one for cheaper laptops like Asus and Acer and so forth, normal DC plug, and one for my HP laptops. And these just tuck away there, they're not removable because they just get lost. And uh, these are standard converters, you've probably seen this model all over eBay, they're pretty terrible. I've modified them by adding a choke and a small cap 
in in series with the output uh, just in order to clean it up a bit because they come standard with no choke on the output and clearly that's going to cause some ripple issues but I think they are going to be fine now, they have plenty of heat sinking, they test fine under a load they're likely to be under and I've loomed up this thing, uh, these two pins are the ATX power on pins, they're bridged together permanently so this thing is always running and all the wiring is tied up, tucked away neatly under some black tape under here, including the relay for the fan speed setting. So, everything should be pretty much good to go. Although, one question does remain. How much power will this thing use when it's just sitting around? Because we've got a lot of stuff going on. We've got the charge controller, we've got the computer bloody power supply, and we've got no less than two $10 eBay cheapo boost converters. So, let's just give it a bit of a go. So we are in the amps range and let's just flick the switch. And that's settling at just about 96 milliamps. And if this were like a car stereo or something, you, this wouldn't be a very good result because we're almost at 100 milliamps, just about, just over a watt of dissipation. But this is for a solar system, so mm, I'd wager it's okay. The vast majority of the dissipation is in the computer power supply, which draws about 70 milliamps when it's sitting idle. Sadly though, this model doesn't really make much difference if you turn it off completely, it goes from 70 milliamps to 60. And since it's running the ventilation anyway, I figured there's no point in ever turning it off. And yeah, I was shooting for less than 100 milliamps and we're just at 100 milliamps, so I'm gonna give this an okay, even though we're kind of pretty damn close to the upper limit. So, with all of that out of the way, I'm closing the lid on this box permanently. This thing is going into production, and that's where it's going to stay. I cannot afford any more last-minute modifications. And I really should not need to, considering that I've ended up at about five times more functionality than I originally planned. So, thank you for watching. Cheerio! And because we've now upgraded to dual 19 volt outputs, this has turned into the QDSCC 121,300 silver 38.